live 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 hi everybody i'm uh excited to be here again on a friday morning did you know that friday is one of my favorite days of the week um mostly because of this live stream i don't know why it makes me so happy to do a live stream uh but we'll be starting in 29 seconds if everything is working properly i'm just gonna do a few tests here to make sure audio sounds good. We'll start in about 17 seconds. See a lot of familiar faces in the chat. Hi to Audie and Freddie and Lolly and Betty. Kind of rhymes, doesn't it? Hi to Key Park and Noriko. Um just a sec here. I need to check something. Well, hello. <laughs> Give me a sec. I just about uh I still uh yeah, I should get started. This is the least smooth start ever for <laughs> an English lesson on a Friday. Well, hello and welcome to this live English lesson uh about things I still I'm still messing up. I hope my whole day doesn't go this way. I hope the day goes smoother. Let me start again. Hello and welcome to this English lesson about things that go together part two. If you recall, we did a lesson earlier this month actually at the end of April. So, about six weeks ago uh about English words that commonly go together. Um these are words where uh I think in the last lesson we did words like mac and cheese. Uh in the last lesson we did words like lock and key. Um they're words that if you learn the one word, you might as well just learn the other word as well because they're often said at the same time. So, this is part two. We're going to learn about 30 more word pairs in English that just go together. Uh they just go together really really well. So, welcome to this lesson about things that go together part two. Before we get started, there's just a few things. One, thanks for watching my lessons in spite of the fact that this one didn't start smoothly. At least I'm in a good mood. That that helps quite a bit, doesn't it? Um it looks like Everything is working well. Thanks to Dave and Todd who are here to moderate the chat and thanks to everyone else who is here as well. I wanna say hi to Musa, Maria, Freddie Wolf, um Betty Lou, uh Maria C again, Audie the Thai, Lolly Lolly, Rod the English teacher, Eugene from Etobicoke, uh Amina is here, uh Vitor, so many familiar faces. It's good to see all of you and welcome to this English lesson. Um and thanks to all of you for mentioning word pairs during the last lesson. This lesson is very much built out of those suggestions. Dave gathered all those suggestions for me uh and he emailed them to me and I found a few more myself but uh this lesson is really a lesson that came from a lot of your suggestions. So, thank you very much for that. Um let me just check a couple things and then we'll get started. I think we're pretty much ready to go. To toss and turn. So, when you don't sleep well, in English, we often will say, oh, I tossed and turned all night or I ate a big bowl of ice cream. Tonight, I'm not going to sleep well. I'm going to toss and turn. So, you can just say, I'm not going to sleep well or you can say, I didn't sleep very well last night. That would be a fine way to describe it but this is a very common thing to say in English. Um I had bad dreams last night and they made me toss and turn all night. So, basically what it means is that you're rolling around in bed. You're not just laying there sleeping nicely. You're kind of like laying on your side and then lay on your other side and then lay on your back. You're kind of moving throughout the night because something is preventing you from having a good night's sleep. So, then you toss and turn. Um last night, I did not toss and turn all night. I had a good night's sleep which make, which makes me uh, happy and in a good mood. Fish and chips. So, I'm not sure how common this is in like the United States. I'm sure in parts of the United States, it's quite common but I know in Britain and in Canada, we have a specific kind of restaurant that sells fish and chips. The town where we sell flowers in also has a fish and chips shop. So, fish and chips are again French fries with fish. So, there's fish. It's usually here. I think it's halibut or cod. Uh, and then it has french fries with it which our British cousins probably call chips uh but we call them french fries but if you buy them with fish at a fish and chip store, then we call them chips. So, it's the only time in Canada where we say fish and chips and use the word chips to talk about french fries. 
cops and robbers. This is a very common game for kids to play. When I was a kid, sometimes my friends would come over and some of them would pretend to be cops and other kids would pretend to be robbers and we would play cops and robbers. So, usually this phrase is used to talk about kids playing, pretending to be a police officer, pretending to be a robber. Uh we often played cops and robbers when I was a kid. Uh the robbers would pretend to steal stuff and hide and then the kids who were pretending to be cops would try to find them. It was uh it was a fun game. We also played hide and seek. That's where one person counts with their eyes closed and everyone else hides and then that person has to find them. I think in French it's called cash cash. But cops and robbers another game that kids sometimes play. Odds and ends. So, this is an interesting one because most people that I know have a drawer in their kitchen like this. It doesn't have forks and knives and spoons in it. It doesn't have like dish towels in it. It has all different things and we would call this a junk drawer in my family and it's filled with odds and ends. When you say something is filled with odds and ends, it means like this drawer, I think it has a screwdriver and some tape and a stapler and some pencils. Uh, I think there's even some batteries over on the far side. This looks exactly like our junk drawer. It's just filled with all kinds of different things and we would call those things odds and ends. Um I'm wondering if some of you have a drawer like that in your house where it's just filled with odds and ends. It has all different things in it. Bells and whistles. So, this doesn't actually refer to bells and whistles. A bell is a big thing that rings um like bong, bong and then a whistle is like something that a referee uh would have during a sports game. But when we use the phrase bells and whistles, we mean that you bought something and it has all of the available options. Like he bought a car with all the bells and whistles. It has power windows and it has GPS and it has um um a stereo and it has uh power steering and all of these things are none of these things are options anymore but <laughs> it has air conditioning. It has um intermittent wipers. So, when you buy something uh and say that it has all the bells and whistles, it means that you've bought something uh where instead of the basic model, You've spent extra money to get all of the really cool features. Often, we'll use this when talking about a car. You know, oh, he bought a new sports car with all the bells and whistles. So, ladies and gentlemen, I don't start my English lessons this way but this is a common thing for people to say when they're talking in front of a group of people. So, a lot of times when you're um doing some public speaking, you'll start by saying, ladies and gentlemen, welcome I'm glad that you came this evening. Tonight, we're going to talk about and then you would say whatever you're going to talk about. Often, when a student gives a speech at school, if there's parents in the crowd, they will start by saying, ladies and gentlemen, fellow students, friends and family and then they'll give their speech. Um so, most often, I hear this when someone is giving a talk, when someone is presenting some information to other people. They'll start by saying, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to this live English lesson. That's how I should start every week. Maybe I'll change and be a little more formal. Drinking and driving. So, there are word pairs uh for bad things in the world. Um when you talk about someone who is driving under the influence of alcohol, uh someone who is driving while intoxicated, the informal way to talk about that is to call it drinking and driving. You know, He got a ticket because he was drinking and driving. He was consuming or had consumed alcohol and then was driving his car. He was drinking and driving. So, those two words often are seen together. People make signs saying stop drinking and driving or you know raise the fine for drinking and driving. A very it's a very serious offense by the way in Canada. You should not drink and drive. Safe and sound. We use the words safe and sound usually when someone goes somewhere and when they let us know that they arrived, they'll often say, uh yep, we landed um at the airport and we're in Holland safe and sound or 
Yes, we arrived at our destination safe and sound and it just means that you arrived there and the trip went well. Uh everything is going really really good and you're happy and safe and sound. So, um it means there was no accident on the way. It means usually that you didn't lose anything on the way. It means that everything went as planned. So, you arrived safe and sound. In fact, one of my kids went on a trip a couple of weeks ago and the first night they were there, they sent a text message saying that they arrived safe and sound, that they had checked into their hotel and they were looking forward to the next day. So, safe and sound. Wine and cheese. I think we should blame the French for this. I'm not 100% sure but often when you go to a party, there might be some wine and cheese. Often when you have cheese to eat at a party in North America and in many parts of Europe, there will also be wine. I hope I just said that right. When there's cheese, there will also be wine. Cheese and wine just naturally go together. When you're eating some really good cheese, some really well-made cheese, it can be nice to have a glass of wine with it. The two flavors go together really, really well. So, it's common sometimes to go to a party and for someone to have a cheese platter and to serve wine with the cheese and we even call them wine and cheese parties sometimes. Oh, I'm going to a little wine and cheese party at my brother's place to celebrate the fact that they bought a new house. They might have a little wine and cheese party. Hey, let's get to some questions though about this lesson. Let me find my question form and let's get some questions done. Uh let's see here. Um Renata in, intruding on my personal life. No. Good morning, Bob. I hope I'm not intruding on your personal life at all. When was the last time you wined and dined Jen or vice versa? Have a great day and weekend, sir. In February of 2020, I think. I'm trying to remember. It might have been 2019. Was the last time we traveled and stayed somewhere multiple nights and we went out and had some really nice meals. So, it's been a while and we should do that again soon for sure. Um from Bob Bob. Hey, Bob. How are you? Good. How often do you eat fish and chips? Probably when I go to a restaurant about once a year. So, we don't go out to eat a lot (laughs) for various reasons right now. When we start to go out to eat more, usually I get a hamburger and fries or fish and chips. Um those are my two go-tos. So, about once a year, I have fish and chips. It's not super common for our family because not everyone likes fish. So, that's kind of stops us from going to the fish and chip shop for fish. Yaroslav says, morning, the wisest teacher, Bob. Do you use in Canada the phrase from dawn till dusk? Have a nice weekend. We actually use the opposite phrase from dusk till dawn. Um so, when someone works through the night, we would say they're working from dusk till dawn. Uh you could say from dawn till dusk but we would probably say from morning till night. Like he's working from morning to night every day uh or he's working from dusk till dawn if he's working through the night. Um Alexi says, hi, Bob. Could you explain the meaning of the idiom phrase to bob and weave? I hope it's on topic. Thanks in advance. I think it's it's very much a boxing term. You know, you bob and weave so that the person can't punch you. Um and I don't use that phrase a lot other than if I was talking about a boxing match. Like, oh, he could really bob and weave and avoid the punches. That's when I would use that phrase. (laughs) And the next one is from who is and then a little mermaid. Bob, are you familiar with the term odds and sods? Have a nice one. I'm gonna say this is probably a British term because I am not familiar with it. I wonder if it's the same as odds and ends. It could be. So, uh Freddie the Frenchie. Hi, Bob. I have no specific question so far. I'll see if one will pop up later. So, I wanna just say salut en écoutant consciencieusement ta leçon. That's a hard word, Freddie. <laughs> Thanks. Consci- consciencieusement. I have to say that one slowly for sure. Uh Ralph is nuts and bolts. We need a T instead of a D. A common combination. Yeah and I think I talked about that in the last lesson. If you go to a hardware store, there will be a section where there's a sign that says nuts and bolts and when you go there, they actually have bolts and nuts that go on the end and washers as well. Uh let's see here. 
from Cesar. Hello, Bob. Do charts and graphs go usually together as well? Could you please make a lesson about this topic? I think it would be very useful for IELTS candidates. Yeah, I'll do a lesson on that. Um, yeah, I think we say charts and graphs. Like you might say, you know, when you do a presentation, it's good to have a lot of charts and graphs. It's good to have a lot of photos. It's a good, it's good to have a lot of charts and graphs so people know what you are talking about. Um so I will um Make a note of that for sure. Sorry, I got distracted by a comment. Um Omar says, hello, Bob. Is there a phrase in English like belle et bien? Like good and well? Yeah, sort of. Um I think it's safe and sound. It would be the closest but I'm not 100% sure. Um Sufian says, what what about cats and dogs? Yes, we have a phrase that it's raining cats and dogs and cats and dogs are the most common pets. So, often People will say something like, you know, bring your pet, bring your cats and dogs if you come over. Sorry, people don't say that that often. You don't actually take your pet very many places. Uh but yes, cats and dogs are often used in the same breath, in the same sentence when you are talking. Um so, this is from Uyghur and then I think Uyghur souping. I'm not sure. I'm trying to interpret. Hi, Bob. Do people use safe and sound in text messages? Yeah, like I use whole words in text messages. So, I would actually send Jen a text saying, I've arrived safe and sound. I'm in Toronto. I'm checking into the hotel now. My kids would probably just say, we're here safe and sound checking in. Like it would be much shorter of a phrase. <laughs> this is from BB. BB says, may you sell me your farm, Bob? I doubt it. I have no plans to move or sell the farm anytime soon. Uh I will probably live here till a ripe old age of 90 if I live that long. Um I have no plans to sell the farm and if I did, I would probably sell it to one of my kids. So, sorry. I know it's a nice farm but not for sale. Um let's see here. Ario says, Hola, Mr. Bob. Question. Is this term go together or do these terms go together? There is smoke, there is fire. How are you anyways? I'm good, Ario. I hope you're good as well. We actually say where there's smoke, there's fire. When we're talking about a situation where like let's say a politician is accused of of a small like something small. They're like, oh, he stole money from his last job and then people might believe that and they might not or they might say, oh, where there's smoke, there's fire. So, they might say, well, because there's a little bit of information, there might be more going on here. Hey, I do wanna say hi to the 404 people watching. Welcome to this English lesson. We will get back to the real lesson in just a moment. I just have one more question uh to have a look at from Henry from Taiwan. Uh by the way, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I think you'll enjoy being a subscriber to this channel. Henry, hi, Henry. Hi, teacher Bob. I watch your English videos day and night. Have a nice weekend. Day and night in that phrase is a perfect example of two words that go together quite often. Ah, I've just been working day and night lately because I'm just so busy or um he's been uh traveling day and night to get to his destination. Driving day and night. So, it just means you're doing something a lot. Cool, Henry, that you're watching the lessons. Um let's see. Mohammed says, my kids asked me once that why do we say dust something and not undust it? Because English is weird. It's a wacky, weird, crazy language. Technically, when you undust something, that would be a better way to say it but we don't say undust. We always say dust. By the way, dusting is when you take something and you like if you do this to get all of the dust off of it, that means you are dusting it. But hey, let me have a sip of water. And we'll get back to the lesson or I should have a sip of tea. That would be better. That's a super full cup of tea. Okay, here we go. Hugs and kisses. So, we often in a card, if we're sending a card to someone we love, we might put in the at the end of the card, you know, from Bob, hugs and kisses and then we actually put X's and O's. Um so, an X and O in English and probably in other languages means hugs and kisses. I think the X is a hug and the O is a kiss. I'm not sure but hugs and kisses is something we sometimes say. Um I don't say it but you know my 
I think my grandma used to say it. Like she would sign a card like have a good day, hugs and kisses from grandma. Uh and then she would put X's and O's. Sometimes people who are dating will do that. You know, a girl will send a boy a card and and say, you know, thanks for the roses on Valentine's Day, hugs and kisses, your girlfriend or something like that. But uh yes, definitely hugs and kisses are two words that go together. So, Yam Banner in the chat says, am I your favorite student? Everyone is my favorite student. All of you are my favorite students. I enjoy all of you. I have no favorites at all. The birds and the bees. So, the reason I have a picture of a person covering their face is because this is an embarrassing one to talk about. The birds and the bees, I guess I should just be honest, is about talking about sex. The birds and the bees is a way that we refer to sex in a without using the word sex. Oftentimes when uh parents are explaining to their children how animals and people reproduce, when they're explaining to their kids how that works, they'll call it the birds and the bees. They'll say, you know, my son's getting older and it's important that I talk to him about the birds and the bees so he understands how that works. Um usually with the um the notion that if kids understand that, they'll they'll be less likely to do it maybe. I don't know. Now, I'm starting to get embarrassed to talk about this subject but the birds and the bees is a kinder, gentler way to refer to the word sex or sex. Spaghetti and meatballs. This one's a little easier to talk about. Spaghetti and meatballs is a very common way to eat pasta with a meat topping with sauce. So, if you go to a restaurant, you can order spaghetti and meatballs. It'll look exactly like this. You'll get a plate of pasta noodles with a tomato sauce and some meatballs on it. When I was a kid, whenever we had spaghetti, we had spaghetti and meatballs. My mom would make meatballs. She would fry the meatballs in a frying pan. She would cook the noodles in boiling water and she would heat up some pasta sauce from a jar. Sorry to all of you who might think that's not good uh and we would have spaghetti and meatballs. A very common meal. So, when you go to a restaurant, you can order a hamburger and fries, uh fish and chips or spaghetti and meatballs. Now, you know three different things you could order if you were at a restaurant. Socks and shoes. Um so, these kind of go together. Uh sometimes when we go somewhere, uh let's say we're going to go on a hike. I'll say to my kids, make sure you wear socks and shoes. Instead of sandals or flip flops or all of those other types of footwear which aren't good for hiking, when you go on a hike, there's lots of rocks and sticks and so, I often say to my kids, you need to wear socks and shoes. Um at our school, students are required as part of their uniform to wear socks and shoes. You can't go barefoot which would be not wearing socks and shoes. So, quite often, these two words will go together especially when talking about uh, what you should be wearing at a certain place. You need to wear socks and shoes when you go to school. You can't wear uh open toed sandals or you can't just go with bare feet. Sweet and salty. I think last lesson we talked about sweet and sour. There's also a common flavor uh for chips and other things here called sweet and salty. Here you see that there's granola bars that are sweet and salty and there are uh, there is a bag of popcorn that's sweet and salty. So, this is exactly what it says it is. It's a snack that has a salty taste but also a very sugary or sweet taste and it's a very cool mixture of the two flavors. Just like sweet and sour is very yummy, sweet and salty can also be yummy as well. Of the two here, I do like sweet and salty popcorn. In fact, there's a kind of popcorn here where they have caramel corn mixed with um, popcorn with cheese on it and salt and it's very, very yummy. It's a yummy, sweet and salty snack. Obviously, there's salt and pepper. Uh every household that I know of has salt and pepper. Sometimes people put salt and pepper on the table when you have a meal so you can put your own salt and pepper on the food. When you go to a restaurant in Canada, If it's a restaurant where you sit down, the table will have salt, pepper, usually ketchup and maybe some other kind of sauce that you can use but salt and pepper, very common. You know, you put salt and pepper on your eggs. Some people put salt and pepper on their salad. If you watch a cooking show, when they're done cooking, they'll often put some salt and pepper 
on the food just before they serve it. Um and we had a question last week uh, or last I think last week about hair. Uh salt and pepper hair would be kind of like my hair where there's some darker parts and some lighter parts. So, a little bit of salt and pepper. Bread and butter. So, this doesn't actually mean what you might think it means. On the far side, you'll see a picture of bread with some butter on it. This is not what the phrase bread and butter is used for. When we talk about bread and butter in English, we're talking about what someone does as a job. So, my bread and butter is teaching. Jen's bread and butter is selling flowers. Uh, My sister's bread and butter is that she's a nurse. So, when you talk about someone's bread and butter, you're talking about what they do to earn money in life. So, if someone said to me, you know, hey, what's your bread and butter? I would say, oh, I'm a teacher. And if uh someone was describing they their job, they might say, yeah, um I do a lot of work on houses. Um I put roofs on houses. That's my bread and butter. So, it's the main job, the main thing that person does in life. Their bread and butter. Knife and fork. So, probably the two most common utensils um in North America would be the knife and fork when eating a meal. The spoon is also popular but the spoon, yeah, the spoon is used for soup, cereal, desserts but often when you go to have a meal, you will eat a meal with a fork and knife. You don't always have to but almost every meal we eat here, I eat with a fork and knife. So, those two words often go together as well. When you go to a restaurant, when you sit down, there will be a fork and knife and spoon for you. Usually, you use the fork and knife for your meal and if you have soup, you would use the spoon but the fork and knife for some reason go together. I think there's even a nursery rhyme about that, isn't there? That the did the fork run away with the spoon though, maybe. I shouldn't talk about nursery rhymes. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. So, this is kind of a funny one. This is a phrase It's kind of insulting and we use this to talk about two people who are very similar. They don't have to be twins but if there are two people that you know that kind of look similar or two people who dress the same way or two people who are friends, you might call them when they're not around, you might refer to them as Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Uh it's an older phrase. I haven't heard students use this phrase for a very long time. But uh I used to work with two teachers who were very similar. They were the same height. They liked the same things and sometimes when they weren't around, we would call them Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Have you seen Tweedledee and Tweedledum? So, uh anytime you refer to two people, remember it's somewhat insulting. So, be careful if you use this phrase and also not very common but it made me giggle when I found it when I was doing my research because Jen and I have used this phrase before. Ups and downs. So, in life, there are things that make you happy like the person on the far side and there are things that make you sad like the person right here and we call them uh the ups and downs of life. Life has its ups and downs. So, ups would obviously be a day that goes well and downs would be referring to a day that doesn't go well but we often we don't use these words separately. They always go together. So, you would say, oh, I had a good day The other day, I had a bad day but you know, life has its ups and downs or maybe someone is really sad and you want to try to make them happy. You might say to them, hey, um just remember, life has it has its ups and downs. You're just going through a tough part of your life right now. Things should get better but yeah, definitely life has its ups and downs. Back and forth. I could not find a good picture for this one. But when something goes back and forth, it goes like this. So, I found a picture of a person pulling a trailer. Sometimes when someone pulls a trailer, the trailer starts to go back and forth behind the car or behind the truck. I don't know if you've ever seen that. So, the phrase back and forth refers to anything that's moving like from one side to the other and back again. So, you could say like a flag in the wind goes back and forth. It just kind of flaps in the wind. Um but this was the the best picture I could find. It's a top view of a person pulling a trailer that's going back and forth. Hopefully, you can see that. And then to and fro. We don't use this phrase a lot anymore but if you have a pendulum and you pull it and let it go, the end of the pendulum will move to and fro. It's basically the same as back and forth. 
it's just an older phrase that you might read in a book or you might hear in an older TV show. I honestly haven't heard this phrase for a long time but uh you might hear it once in a while. Something can move to and fro. Yin and yang. So, even though this isn't originally English, we do use yin and yang when we talk about things. We use it when we talk about things that have two parts that are kind of different from each other but together they make something whole. So, you might say something like day and night or good and evil or uh man and woman or male and female or light and dark. Whenever we talk about things that kind of go together but they have distinct halves, we might use the term yin and yang and I'm not sure if we're using it properly in North America uh but we do definitely say it sometimes and uh that's how we would use it to talk about two you know summer and winter or those kinds of things. Things that are part of a whole but they're they're definitely different from each other. Hopefully that hopefully that made some sense. And let's do one more and then we'll get to some questions. Bacon and eggs. Oh, I misclicked there. Let's do one more and then we'll get to some questions. Uh bacon and eggs. So, this is a very common thing to order in a restaurant in North America for breakfast. So, bacon is obviously strips of meat. It's pork and eggs are obviously from a chicken. Bacon and eggs is a very common meal. If I go to my local restaurant for breakfast, I could say I'll have a cup of coffee. Uh I'll have bacon and eggs with white toast uh toasted um and some jam and then they that's what they would bring to me. So, bacon and eggs is probably the most common. Sometimes people order sausage and eggs. That's another breakfast you might have here uh but bacon and eggs is a very very common thing for people to order in a restaurant for breakfast. So, now you can order four things. Uh hamburger and fries from the last lesson, bacon and eggs, uh fish and chips, and I forgot the other one. What's the other one? Oh, um spaghetti and meatballs. So, you can order lots of food. Hey, let's go to members only chat. Just give me a moment here to set that up. I have to click a button here. By the way, if you don't know what's happening right now, why is Bob changing the lesson? It's because we're going to go to members only chat mode. Members can now ask questions directly in the chat. And as they do that, I wanna say thank you. So, thank you so much for being members. It's awesome that you have decided to support my channel. Um I appreciate it. Uh let me get to a question from the form as well. Um not a lot left up here but I'll answer from here while I wait for a member question. Dennis says, dear teacher Bob, good day. Please tell, what is your favorite sport game and do you do any sport activity from time to time? I like watching basketball now. Um, I like watching the Olympics too, by the way. Um, and the only sport I do is I walk. I don't know if that's a sport, uh, but I do like to go walking or exercise. So, Lolly Lolly in the in the chat has two more options Romeo and Juliet, star crossed lovers from a Shakespeare play. Romeo and Juliet were from two families that didn't like each other, but they fell in love. And I won't tell you anymore in case you didn't read it. Uh peace and love is something that um oh is that a bad thing? I don't wanna make a bad si- si- in 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 this part of the world, this means peace. So, if someone says peace and love, I think if I turn it the other way, it means something bad in other countries but here you might say um in the seventies, people who we called hippies very much wanted peace and love in the world. Betty Lou says, hi, the cutest teacher, Bob. Do you use uh hugs and kisses to express affection? I think it is a lovely way to do so. Stay hydrated. Yes, we definitely when we're writing something to someone we love, we might put X's and O's which means hugs and kisses. Uh Musa says, pencil and eraser. Another good suggestion. Should we do part three in a month? Maybe. We'll see. Um hey, Harry 300 says, Bob, is it common to use vice versa in spoken English? Yes. You know, so I might go to work this year but next year we might do vice versa. Jen might go to work. So, you would use vice versa to talk about the opposite of something. Uh Freddie Wolf says, hey Bob, finally a question pops out. Is hugs and kisses equal to tic-tac-toe? In French, jeu de morpion. Thanks in advance. By the way, break and butter. Oh, um bread and butter equals mon gagne pain c'est d'être un prof. Oh, So, my bread winning. Yes, interesting. Very cool. Um 
So, hugs and kisses, X's and O's basically mean hugs and kisses but the game tic-tac-toe is also called X's and O's. So, good catch there. Noriko, morning sir. I just came up with this idea. It's all trial and error. Thanks a lot. We're gonna flip the A and the I in that word. So, trial, T-R-I-L. Trial and error means let's say you wanted to make bread and you didn't have a recipe. You would just make one loaf and see if it worked and then you would fix a few things and make another loaf. You would do it by trial and error. That's a great suggestion, Noriko. Trial and error. Uh Naomi says make or break, hit or miss. Yes. So, make or break means you're gonna try something and hopefully it works. Um key park. Share an idiom in my language. Rain follow wind and poop follows fart. <laughs> a little bit rude but funny and makes sense. Yes. Very <laughs> that's very we don't have the same idiom in English but that is certainly funny. Adi the tie, high and low and why are people they like to play high low gambling? Oh yeah, people do like different kinds of betting with high low, don't they? Uh Musa says poop and pee. Yes, when you're talking to children, you would often say that. You would say to them, uh we're going on a trip. Do you have to go pee or poop before we leave? That would be a common thing to ask very young children because stopping at bathrooms on a trip is never fun. Yaroslav, no more questions. Just thanks for what you're doing. That means a lot for many for sure. You're welcome, Yaroslav. Betty Lou, hi, the cutest teacher, Bob. Speaking of affection, what is your love language? Top secret. I think when someone uh like when Jen does things for me, like I think it, I gave an example in a lesson once where I knew there were a lot of chores to do when I got home from work and when I got home, Jen had done them all. That makes me feel very, very much loved for sure. Um Ricardo, hello, Mr. Bob. Long time no see you. I'm here just to say hello. Hi, Ricardo. I have a nice weekend. Bye. You too. Norco says give and take. Hey, could I get Dave uh to maybe start uh co- copying and pasting these again and we will do another lesson at some point. That was very helpful last time, Dave. Uh if you could scroll back and pick up some of these. Uh Adi says haha to Key Park. Uh Norco says poop and pee. I just avoided saying that. Good plan. Uh Bob, in to and fro, why do you pronounce fro with a th despite just an f or do I? I have to put my reading glasses on. It's just a t or do you miss? Oh, to and fro. It definitely is fro. To and fro. When I speak quickly, it might sound a little bit more like I'm saying a th sound. So, but it's definitely fro. Fro. I don't wanna say it the other way to confuse you. Um Mel says yin and yang. I didn't know what it is in English. I'm impressed. Thank you for your teaching. No problem. Betty Lou, hi, the cutest teacher, Bob. How would you describe a black and white situation? Have a fantastic weekend. That's another good one, by the way. A black and white situation is when it's obvious what you need to do. Um if someone has a car accident, um it's totally black and white that you should call the police. Like You don't have to think about it or wonder if it's the right thing to do. You just know it's the right thing to do. Maria C says, hi, Bob. How are you? It's been difficult for me to join your live lately but here I am. Hi, Maria C. Uh, Which colors do you think go together? Have a great Friday. So, I like complementary colors. So, I like um I don't know how to describe it exactly but I do think that um like I often wear blue shirts. I don't know if you've noticed it. Uh, and I wear khaki colored pants. So, a light brown and I think that that goes really well together but what else would you expect from a person who goes to a school to teach every day with a collared shirt that's usually blue? I'm gonna wear khaki pants. Hey, let me see if there's another question from the forum. Uh Wilson says, uh, I gotta find my question. There we go. Hi, teacher Bob. Have a good day. Do you know where yin and yang come from? I think fr- comes from Chinese. I think so too. I'm not you know 100% sure of the uh origin of that phrase but I think you are correct. Um Kimmy and Kiwi from Korea. Hi, Kimmy and Kiwi. Hello, Bob. I heard back and forth, up and down, left and right on a TV show when the person wasn't sure about something. What does the idiom mean? Have an awesome day. So, when you don't know the answer, sometimes you go back and forth like in your mind, you're thinking the answer might be three or four and you kind of go back and forth um because you don't know which one is correct. So, you're like, oh, I'm trying to decide which. I'm just going back and forth in my mind between two answers. Um and then up and down, yeah, that would be used in a different way um because 
Yeah. I can't think about, I can only think about that physically. Like people get up and down. You know, kids often get up and down a lot when they're supposed to be sitting. Um, and then sometimes you don't know your left from your right which means you're confused. There's a lot more explanations I could give on that. I should do a whole lesson on that one actually. That would be a good idea. Uh let me get back to the members chat. Let's see here. Maria says, uh, Henry says, ha ha or Harry. Harry 300. Ha ha talking about poop and pee. Last time I read an article about it and found straining to poop is straining used only as a medical term or can we use it anytime? It's definitely a medical term. If you're ever in the hospital um and you're it takes a lot of effort to do that, you would say that you are straining. Uh, Maria, yes, I've noticed you like blue and it looks really nice on you, Bob. Thanks for your answer. I do like blue. I'm I'm needing some new shirts though. I really need to go shopping. It's been a long time since I've bought shirts. Uh Hayati says, hey, Bob, do you know watermelon? It will be good with cheese. I've never had watermelon with cheese but I should try that. That sounds like it could be tasty. Musa says, cats and dogs. I don't have any dogs but I do have cats. Joe, Shadow and Everest. Those are cool names by the way, Musa. Uh Yaroslav says, bed and breakfast which is kinda like a hotel but you're at someone's house and then peace and quiet is what sometimes my kids ask me what I want for my birthday and then I always say, I just want peace and quiet. (laughs) So, that's a good one though, Yaroslav. Cool. Hey, let me turn off members only uh chat. While I'm doing that, let me say thank you to all of you who are members once again. By the way, if you are interested in becoming a member, there is a button below this lesson. If you look below, there is a button below the lesson that says join and you will get a bit of an explanation of what you get if you become a member. There's also um in the description, there's some information about what uh you get if you are a member. An extra video on Wednesday, green name during live streams, little crown by your name during live streams and you get to participate in members only chat. Kind of a fun thing. Hey, let's get back to the lesson though. Let's finish this lesson up. We were on bacon and eggs. Pros and cons. So, pros and cons refer to the good and the bad. When you're deciding to do something, sometimes it's good to write a list of the pros and the cons. Let's say I was going to go I was thinking of working at a different school. I could make a list of the pros. I could say, you know, school is closer. Um classes are smaller. I would write down all of the good things about that job. All the pros. And then on the other side, cons, I would say, you know, I would get paid less. Um more responsibilities. So, pros and cons are simply the good and bad part of something. Uh there's some pros and cons to being a YouTuber. One of the pros of being a YouTuber is that <clears throat> excuse me, I'm my own boss. I get to do whatever I want. One of the cons is that sometimes I make a video and not very many people watch it and then I'm kind of sad. <laughs> Sorry. That is one of the cons actually. Um pins and needles. So, this doesn't actually refer to a pin is something that you can put in the wall or in a piece of clothing. It's a very, very sharp little, it's like a miniature nail. And then a needle is used for sewing. But pins and needles is a phrase we use to talk about someone who is anxious about something or worried about something or um nervous or excited a little bit. So, let's put it this way. Sometimes when you apply for a job, You have to wait to find out if you got the job and so you're on pins and needles for a few days. That means for a few days while you're waiting for them to call you back to say if you got the job, you're like nervous but excited and worried and you're having all these different emotions. We would say that you're on pins and needles in that situation. It's not fun to be on pins and needles like when when you apply for a job or when you're waiting to get accepted at a university. You might be on pins and needles. Bow and arrow. So, for some reason, when we talk about a bow, we almost always say bow and arrow. There are people that go hunting in this area in the fall using a bow and arrow. We don't say with a bow. We usually almost, we almost always say bow and arrow. At the Olympics, there are events where you can use the bow and arrow in order to fire arrows at a target. So, often used in the same phrase. Arts and crafts. 
So I think I did a lesson on arts and crafts. I can't remember. I've done so many lessons now. But arts and crafts would be any time you are painting or drawing or even making something. It looks like this person had some plates and they did some painting on the plate. So we would call that arts and crafts. Maybe you make little baskets. Maybe you create Christmas ornaments. Maybe you sit down with some friends and you buy some materials to make um I don't know. I'm trying to think of other arts and crafts like little bird feeders or something. Whenever you're making little things out of wood or cardboard or fabric uh and then painting it or dyeing it, we call it arts and crafts. So often uh kids will go uh to camp or they'll go do something fun and they'll have arts and crafts in the afternoon. They might make some little things using a hot glue gun and little pieces of wood or something like that. Copy and paste go together. I'm not sure if you knew this but copy and paste is when you highlight something with your computer mouse and then you right click and choose copy or you click the copy button and then you go somewhere else in the document or a different document and you right click and choose paste or you choose the button that says paste. It's a way to duplicate something on a computer. And then meat and potatoes. So meat and potatoes can refer to a meal. So when I was growing up, we often had meat and potatoes. That was a very common meal when I was growing up. Because I lived on a farm, we had plenty of meat and because potatoes are cheap, it's a very common thing to eat in North America. So when I was growing up, my parents often made some kind of meat and potatoes for supper. We would always have a vegetable as well. So, we would have broccoli or green beans or a salad but the main part of the meal was often meat and potatoes. Now, we also use this phrase to talk about a person who's just really trustworthy and honest and hardworking. We would say he's a real meat and potatoes guy, okay? Uh I've been described as a real meat and potatoes guy before. Like I'm I guess I have those characteristics. I don't wanna say what I'm actually like but when you describe someone as being a meat and potatoes person, that's what it means. Uh let me actually look up the meaning of meat and potatoes. Meaning of meat and potatoes. It says uh an ordinary fundamental thing and the basic ingredients. Oh, I'm reading the wrong definition. Sorry here. Um so it says unpretentious, kind, simple and normal guy. A real meat and potatoes guy. So, there you go. I guess it's a normal human being (laughs) is a meat and potatoes person. Hey, that's the end of the formal part of the lesson. I don't think there's a lot of questions but I will answer questions now until the end. Let me have a little bit of a sip of water here. Let me get the next question up on the screen so that you can read it while I have a sip. Barry says, greetings professor Bob. Quick question. Do you say foray into and fit like a glove in day-to-day English? We would use fit like a glove but to foray into something is is very formal. It just means to make your way in. We don't use that very often but um sometimes when like I'll try on a new shirt and I'll say, oh, it fits like a glove or You'll try on a glove and it fits really well. You say it fits like a glove. No, we wouldn't say that about an actual glove. Um you might put on a a new hat and say, oh, it fits like a glove which just means that it fits perfectly um when you have that, when you say that. Um hey, I wanna say thanks to MH Ansari for becoming a member. That's awesome. I think I missed a few uh welcomes on the chat. I wasn't paying close attention to the chat today. I should be a little more careful. Um Prasad says, hey Bob, happy Friday. Happy Friday to you too. I just wanna know if you do English training personally like coaching classes. I do not. Um it's something I might do someday but right now, this is how my life works. I still work at a school. I'm part-time but I'm still like 80%. So, I do YouTube work in the morning and then I have to be at work around 10 o'clock every day. Um I don't have a lot of extra time to do one-on-one lessons. Someday when I'm not teaching at the high school, I might do that but at this time, I only have time really to make videos, to do live streams and then to go and do my job. Uh let's see. 
Hello from Mauritania, <clears throat> uh, from Mohammed. It's a pleasure to see you on a new lesson. My greeting to Jen. Also, I wonder to know what words and phrases go together with truth and love. Yeah, truth and love, um, love and peace. Uh, it's hard to say hugs and kisses, although that's more romantic. Um, I'd have to think about that one a bit more, Muhammad. But truth, um, truth and justice go together as well, for sure. Um, so from David, the last question here. Hi, Bob. I'm confusing. Oh, I'm confused. That seemed Bob. You're wearing the shirt with square all the time. Why? What is the name of the clothes, and do they have and do they have any other name or used in the lo- locally? So definitely, I wear plaid shirts. Plaid shirts always have kind of a square pattern. Most shirts that I buy have some sort of square pattern. They usually have some blue in them. Now, this shirt is mostly white but it does have a fine, it has two colors of blue in it and a little bit of beige as well Um, but mostly, I wear plaid shirts. I wear blue plaid shirts almost every day to school. That's kind of my uniform. If I wore something else, my students probably wouldn't recognize me. They would be like, who's that guy? Um, We don't know who he is. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Remember that this lesson will come out in a couple of days in a shorter format for you to re-listen to. So, do watch it one more time. Um it's good when you're learning English to listen to something more than once. If there are parts you didn't understand, certainly come back and watch them again. That's just a really really good idea. But uh, I am going to wrap this lesson up. Um people often ask what that means. When you wrap something up, it means you bring it to an end. So, I wrap the lesson up by telling people, "Hey, Don't forget to watch this again on Sunday um, or I'll say don't forget new video coming out on Tuesday. Um, I say bye to a lot of people. Bye to Eugene and Lolly Lolly and Vitor and Aria and Noriko and Dave and Todd and DeRunner and so many more people. Uh, Harry 300, I'm scrolling back. Cecilia Romia. Um, I know Maria C was here. I know Key Park is here. Bye to Freddie Wolf and Naomi T and Musa and Yaroslaw and all of the people who hang out and watch and for those of you who are members as well. Um what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something else. No, that's it. I'm gonna have a nice restful weekend. Um I don't have a super busy day at work because the school year is slowly ending. We have just a few days left before exams so that should be fun. Anyways, bye Tony. Bye Ralph. Uh, I just see a few more people saying bye in the chat. Bye to all of you. Have a good day. Have a good weekend.